Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with Ask Dave episode 233. We're looking at the big IR antenna, which is a ground mounted vertical put out by Step IR. Uh, the last few videos about this have shown the unboxing and the construction and the fantastic help that viewer and patron Brad Rich uh, has given me. He drove all the way up here from Alamogordo, New Mexico to help me with this antenna. Now the antenna is up, in place, installed and this particular test today is a receive test. We're going to compare the uh, big IR vertical with the 40 meter dipole that I put up a couple weeks ago okay and see which one is better how well they do can in comparison um, the step IR does very well by the way uh, then we're going to look at the uh, comparison on 20 meters I don't have a 20 meter dipole but I do have an MFJ hex beam now this isn't really a fair test because the hex beam has gain whereas the uh, step IR does not. So we're going to look at the difference. I've got the uh, hex beam pointed kind of at the east coast from here in Colorado. So I'm picking up the entire east coast, the Great Lakes area, and so on. Uh, this test was done about 4.30 this afternoon, so it wasn't dark yet here. Uh, both the 20 meter band and the 40 meter band were very busy, and you'll see the results. Now what I'm using to show this, um, I've got this uh, rig expert uh, antenna analyzer and we look at the SWR on both the uh, dipole and the vertical on 40 and the hex beam and the vertical on 20. Now I'm using uh, the output of the FTDX3000. It takes the antenna in, buffers it a little bit and sends it right back out to an RF connector on the back of the radio and that goes straight into my SDR Play RSP1A software defined radio using SDR Uno's software which is the house brand software for SDR Play. It's very interesting to look at this. I'll give you a sneak peek. The um, big IR antenna equips itself very well. So let's take a look first at 40 meters then at 20 meters. Okay, we're looking at the SWR curves on the left, the 40 meter homebrew dipole. It's only up about 21 feet, so it's not going to be a fantastic uh, dipole. On the right is the step IR, big IR vertical. It's ground mounted, and I am using just the old radials that I had there for the butternut. I haven't yet installed the uh, big IR radio kit. So right now there's about, I think, 28 radials out there. It's uh, quite a few. Uh, both have satisfactory SWR curves. Uh, the homebrew dipole goes down to 1.2 and the step IR down to uh, about 1.5 there and it's uh, there across most of the band. So both antennas tune very nicely. Okay. We're looking at a very active 40 meter band right now and we are on the um, step IR, uh, big IR uh, vertical. Okay, and I'm going to turn now to the dipole. With the dipole, you'll note that the noise level goes up. Here's step IR, dipole. But now, look at the signals as they stick above uh, the uh, noise on the top half of the screen. If I turn to the step IR, we get greater signal to noise ratio and less overall noise than we do on the dipole. Now the dipole isn't very high, it's only about 21 feet in the air or so, and yet, uh, and it does receive an, uh, very well as you can see here, but the step IR seems to have an advantage. You can also look at the constant signals like over on the left side at 707 Six is the FT8. There's bunches of people there, and you see when here I am on the step IR, we get a higher signal to noise ratio than when I step to the dipole. So, what we're seeing here on 40 meters is that the step IR 
is a far better receive antenna just across the board than uh, the dipole. Okay, now let's switch to 20 meters. Let's also look at the SWR curves for the uh, two antennas I'm using for this. I don't have a 20 meter dipole, but I do have an MFJ hex beam. It's up about 25 feet. It is rotatable. Note that there are no adjustments on the antenna for SWR and the uh, 20 meter element, which is the largest element, is a bit long. Um, but it's still less than two to one across the band. Uh, the uh, step IR, big IR, has got very nice 1.2 uh, minimum SWR and it's less than 1.5 to one across the band. Again, just the old radials that I had for the butternut. I think there's about 28 of them. So we've got a ground mounted vertical versus uh, an MFJ hex beam and uh, the hex beam I point out has gain, uh, several dB of gain, uh, and it is currently pointed uh, to the state of New York. So it's pointed back to the uh, east coast and the entire east coast is uh, within the beam width of that antenna. And uh, so we would expect to see some signals uh, stronger on that antenna than they are on the vertical. So let's take a look. Okay, we're on 20 meters now. The dipole doesn't do very well, obviously. Okay, here is the step IR. Now I have to flip a couple more positions and the comparison antenna, it's not really fair here, is a MFJ hex beam which has gain. Okay, so let's flip it over to here, this is the MFJ hex beam right here, and here is the uh, vertical. Now, as you can see, some of the signals are a little bit better here. That's because I've got the beam pointed to the east coast from here in Colorado. And you can sort of see it if you take a look at the FT8, okay. The FT is just a little bit stronger on the beam, but um, I would say offhand, just looking at the waterfall, now we're back to the step IR, the beam, step IR, the beam, that uh, we're getting pretty nice performance. A little bit lower noise on the beam, which you might expect because it's just receiving in one direction. And some of the signals are going to be bigger on the step IR, which we are on right now. But it's very interesting. The step IR, big IR, really holds its own on both bands. These are the two bands I'm going to test today. Well, that was a fascinating test. I think we can say that the big IR quits itself very, very well. Now, receiving is one thing, transmitting is another, and that is coming up in the next video. So let's take a look. The next uh, big IR video will be the transmitting report and how well it does uh, in various conditions on that. I am anticipating a very good performance. Uh, for those of you who would like to support the channel financially, if you'll go to uh, HTTPS um, hyphen colon, or let's see, colon slash slash decastler.com slash support, there's all different kinds of ways that you can do that there. And I greatly appreciate all the people who are helping keep this channel going and enabling me to uh, get new things and try new things, go different places and try things all for ham radio. To those of you who are studying for your general tests right now, I have a lot of the general videos updated. I have sections one, two, three, five, seven, eight, and nine are all updated. Four, I have 4.1 and 4.2 are updated. I have a few to go and I have section six to go. So it's getting close and I'm trying to get those done as quickly as I can. So until next time, 73.